Who was on that bit? Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Dorothy, you couldn't more support me in a letter here. May count down here. My name is Explorer Studies, Madam Rosemary, who is a teacher at St. Moses Academy. He's a level one certified Google Educators Group leader. And uh, she's currently doing her master's. At uh, KU in education. We also have Madam Clarice Wang, Google Educators Group trainer. And uh, before I introduce them, I would please like to remind you we have the forms. We have the forms, we have the links where you're going to share your name, your full name. You're easily free. So please, Mary, Karibu. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'd like to welcome you all uh, to our presentation today. As you have been told, my name is Rosemary, a teacher at Moy Forces Academy, Lanet. Uh, today, I'm very delighted to be here to share with you what I have, Be Safer Online. What comes into your mind when you see this word online? The internet. Of course, this is where all people like going. Why do they like going there? Because of the information that it has. It is a vast virtual space with information. Whatever you want to learn about, whatever you want to post, if you want to find your friends, that's the place to go. So because of its power, people fall in love with it. And if you fall in love with someone, you want to be that person throughout. And are there any dangers? Yeah, there are very many dangers. So you need to be safer online. So let's join together as we walk through the journey of being safer online. So, what do you use the internet for? Have you ever used the internet? I'm sure most of you have ever used the internet. And uh, I'm going to ask you what you use the internet for. So I have numbers one to four. This is going to be a very interactive session. So kindly go to the chat box and tell me what you use the internet. All right, take your time. I'm giving you a minute to type on the chat box. Okay, if you uh, use it for chatting, you, you type number one. If you use it for homework, you uh, type number two. If you use it to share photos of yourself and family, uh, you type number three. If you use it to share funny photos, and videos kindly type number four. But if you use all of them, you can type on. So thank you so much. I can see you guys are chatting. Thank you. I see the, the chat streaming in. So what do you use the internet for? The first question would be, do you use it to chat? Do you use it to do homework? Do you use it to share photos or funny videos and uh, funny photos? Okay, all right, great. That's a survey that you're taking. So kindly uh, give us your answers. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, very well, okay. Wow, okay. If you use the internet, are there any dangers? Definitely, there are dangers. We have bad guys around. And these bad guys are the oversharers, the hackers, the fishers, troublemakers. Uh, we are going to look at each and every one and what we can do to counter them. So I'm going to invite my co-presenter, Clarice, 
to take us through how to be an internet hero. We are going to walk through this journey together. So kindly, my co-presenter, Clarice, are you there? Yes, thank you very much, Rosemary. Just as the way Rosemary has said it, we really want to help you be safe on internet. Just as we know very well, that nowadays we cannot be able to work minus the internet. So allow me to take you through some of the steps that uh, we how to deal with this. Uh, how we how we are going to, it's going to help us to find how to deal with the bad guys. So we have the five, and we normally say these are our five objectives. So by the end of the presentation, you should be able to know how to be, deal with the five four guys and how to be use the five objectives. So I will start with the first objective, which is uh, being sharp. When I say being sharp here, or oh, sometimes I would. Uh, use a synonym of sharp and replace it with being smart. When I say being smart is, you have to really know what you are sharing. That is what I mean by being smart. You have to know what you are sharing. As we all know that nowadays, it's just a click. When you click of everything, you just find it just gone. So that's why we are trying to encourage you that uh, when you really want for us to deal with the fast bad guy, the oversharing, we really have to be smart on what we are sharing. Because sometimes you may find that clicking it has gone viral and uh, we know is that phase that shows that internet never forget. So we are going to help you and take you through on how to be sharp. Just as you can see, there is a picture and uh, the picture that is on the screen if you are an internet user, you might have seen that video. That video is for someone by the name Salt Bay. It's just a video of a man preparing a barbecue piece of meat. So that one was shared. And we are going, you are going to find out that that video went viral. And we are saying that when you share, it does not mean that when you share it, we normally share bad things. But we are trying just to find a way that some people are sharing it for fun. And also the reason why we are trying to help you here is that you have to know that when you keep on forwarding into WhatsApp groups, forwarding forward, sometimes you may really want an pass an important message. But because your audience knows you as somebody who just gets things and forward, you will have not be able to achieve your objective. So that is what we really want you to know because uh We'll find that how would you, like for example, we have that particular video there, and maybe the moderator will post for you the link. That link, uh, the video, the picture that we are using there, that one is a uh, picture of Emanuela. And we all know Mark Angel. Mark Angel. Uh, Sometimes for Mark Angel, Mark Angel just posts these particular videos, make fun, make people happy, but uh, not for bad intention. That's why we are saying sharing is okay, but you should really know our motive of sharing. Yes, so this is the bad guy, that bad guy of oversharer. So we want to really see, we want to take some scenario. And uh, after seeing the following scenario, we will really now understand why we are really insisting and uh, we are trying to advise you as educators that you can you tell your children and tell your, um, your students the, the, the disadvantage or the drawbacks of oversharing. Yes, like now you can see on the screen, that is people BT. People BT just posted, we are filming. So let me just uh, assume that one was on an Instagram or a Facebook. And that is what uh, people posted. I hate my teacher. And you can even see the exclamation mark to express how people hate the teacher. So what I will want is uh, 
I want us to, what will happen? I just want you to imagine, put yourself, you are a teacher. Because what I, I believe those who are watching us, we are educators or we are parents. You will imagine you are a teacher. And then you are a friend of these students of yours. And you find that the student, the, the student has just posted, I hate my teacher with a lot of exclamation mark. Uh, I want to try and tell me what would you think? Will you, how will you feel it? How would you feel it? And uh, that one just go to the chat uh, to the chat box and how you will feel as an educator. I just want you to put your shoes, take maybe 30 seconds, just put your shoes, put yourself into the shoes of the teacher who chipo heads. And then as, as we do that, uh, what might happen? Uh, what might happen to people? Yeah, automatically we believe we are all human beings and we are all here. we all also have feelings. I really don't think if it will go well with the people, if uh, you as a teacher, you really find that um, people wrote something about you on that particular and posted it on that manner. As much as you might say that you for, you are forgiven all of that, but you at least you, there's that particular part, there's that way how you'll be watching, how you'll be trying to put this people. So that's why we want to tell you that uh, advice you are youth that uh, the footprint, digital footprint, matters a lot. What you post on the internet might cost them one day or another time. Yes. So we will see. On how we can be able to, we can be able to adjust. So what we can say here is that uh, we advise your children or the students to know their audience, know what to post in which particular place, and that's why we are talking of settings. You will find like uh, I would want to use a very good example, like in uh, maybe in a WhatsApp group. Maybe or maybe in WhatsApp platform, social media platform. You'll find that sometimes maybe you may decide you put your settings in such a way that a group of people are unable to view your status. So those are some of the things that uh, we'll really want to encourage you that uh, always uh, advise our youth that they should be able to find on how to adjust their settings, which is very, very important. So I have that, uh, there's a particular video that I have. I really want you to, we are going to take maybe one minute to watch the video. And thereafter, you will be able to tell me what you have depicted from the video that we, we, um, we, we um, just playing. Okay, yes. Yes, uh, I hope you have you have seen the video that I've played, and that's why the video that have, uh, you we have watched. You see, it has some positive, yeah. 
I, I believe you have recognized some positive content on the online. It was just a video that somebody was preparing and then the video was shared. So that's why I'm saying that uh, well, let's get what, what our children share or what our teenagers share. Let it be always uh, positive. Yeah, so we have uh, uh, something there that I really want us to to go through this is going to be an activity and uh, in this activity uh, we want to see is it not okay to share with anyone so you'll find that uh, uh, we can label this one maybe we put the rows we label them one two three and then on the other side uh, we start from the another row we label them i think i have around uh, 12 active 12 points there so i will really want you to go to the chat section and tell me what you really find is really important or what is good, what you can really share. Are you comfortable sharing your home address and phone numbers, your, your password email, news uh, articles, your school location, and all that? Which one are you comfortable? And uh, if you check on your on your slides, yeah, okay, we may say sometimes like no, okay, we are not, this one is what somebody was thinking. But there are those particular some people you may find somebody may not be very very comfortable with sharing their phone number. Person, another person may be comfortable with sharing the number. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is that what is private to you, it is not private. you'll find if you check on your slide on what I'm presenting, you'll find is that it is not okay to share with anyone. It is okay to share with anyone. It's okay to share with everybody. So that one, it was just somebody's thought. But uh, you as a person, you can now come with what we term as maybe if it is about the family, you can come up with the family rules and tell your children, this is what is okay with me when it's shared in public. Yeah, so that is very also key. Yeah, so we just want, uh, as uh, we are winding up with this first objective and dealing with the oversharer and being smart as our objective, I really want us to have some games here to play. Yeah, so I really want you to tell me once it is uh, once it's on the internet, is it stay there forever? Just go to the chat box. And uh, type for me: Is it really true that once I've, I've uh, posted it on the on my web uh, on my maybe prop, uh, uh, social platform, maybe if it's Facebook, does it really stay there forever? And let's see what we have to say. Yeah, it is true, and that one you can really remember. We did say that internet never forgets. The next one. 1.37, or we can even put it at 1.34 billion people use the internet. Is it really true? And putting that into consideration with this COVID era where everything is done virtually, is it really true? Go to the chat section and uh, be able to tell us if it is true or if it is false. Let's find what we have found out. Great, it is very, very true that, and you'll find that even more than that because of this pandemic that has affected us, more people nowadays rely on the internet. The next one, people like becoming men and go viral. Who will want to go viral? And remember when I say go viral, it's something that you posted and people start copying it and pasting it, copying and pasting to different social groups. Who will want that? Or is it true or false? I think mostly things that go viral are always of the negative side. So nobody will really want to go viral. Sharing online can be reveal our location. Like now, maybe I'm on YouTube, maybe, maybe I'm on Facebook. Can someone somewhere seated can know where Clarice is doing the presentation if I'm online on Facebook? Very true. There is that feature called nearby. 
So when you are all, your location is on, people will always know. Even, even if you Google now where Clarice is, just go to Google and type Clarice and you find location, it will automatically take you where I'm doing the presentation. That is very true. If I don't share with my parents, they won't see it. And this one you should add well. When your child does not share with you anything, what he shares on the Facebook, he shares with the friends or on other WhatsApp group or Instagram. Are you able as a parent or as a teacher, like the one that you just talk about Chipo? Maybe Chipo thought that when he, is it really true or false? Automatic is false. So that really marks the end of being sharp. And we have dealt with the very, very first guy who is uh, of a sharer. So back to you, Rosemary, to proceed from that particular point. Presentation. And uh, the guy I'm going to work on now is uh, the hacker. So how am I going to counteract the hacker? By being strong. Yeah, being strong. So be strong, secure your secrets. So let's uh, uh, move on. We have the hacker. The hacker can bring this possible danger, might access your accounts and your personal information. Why? These hackers can get hold of your information by guessing your weak password. You know, password is one of the security measures that we put so that people don't for information. You can imagine if someone gets your information, you're done. You, because people obviously use that information negatively. So this hacker, how are we going to work on him? Okay, let's look at uh, examples of uh, passwords. Okay, can you crack this code? We have these uh, passwords. Eh? These ones, uh, I don't know, you can crack them. I, let, let's see, use the chat and tell me whether you can be able to crack number one okay what's missing there okay use the chat box i can see the no. answer streaming in thank you thank you so much this is awesome uh, great okay and as you're typing remember to fill in the feedback form and uh, also if you want to get a certificate Kindly fill the certificate form. Yeah, I can see number four. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Wow. Yes, four is missing. Wow. Okay, let's see. Yeah, you guys are good. Uh, what's missing in the second uh, word? Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see uh, S, S, and R. Awesome. Yeah, password. Oh, you guys are good at cracking these codes. Imagine this is your password. Okay. What about the third one? Let's see what's there in the chat box kindly. Yeah, great, great. The third one. All right. Yes. Hello. Hello. That is A uh, and L. A and L are missing. That is awesome. Thank you so much. So this one is uh, uh, these ones are characteristics of uh, weak passwords, and that is how hackers are able to get your information. So you've got to be very careful when you're doing your password, when, when you're giving, when you're securing your uh, your information online. So great, you are very good students. What is a strong password? What, what, according to you, is a strong password? Let, let's see. Uh -huh. Let's see. According to you, what a strong password constitutes? Let's see. This one is going to be very interactive, very interesting, and you guys are good. They are, you're awesome. You know these things. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Ah, uh -huh. they can't be cracked. Okay, that is very good. I can see that. Wow. Hey, wow. You guys are good. So let's see the characteristics of 
a strong password. Uh, eight to 12 characters. They should be eight to 12 characters. Don't just use a four characters and you say you have a password. They should be eight uh, to 12 characters. There should be a mixture of number and letters. We have a mixture of numbers and letters. Okay, let's see the other one. Ah, they should have uppercase and lowercase characters. Oh, okay, great. You're going to be awesome. These hackers are not going to find you. The other one is should have special characters. Okay. Let's make it memorable. And there are some instances where you guys forget your password. I'm sure there are very many instances where you guys can forget your passwords. So there are ways in which you can make your password memorable. Okay, so let's see. Each time uh, you forget your password, uh, probably you may say, because I forget my password, I want to share it with someone. Don't share it with someone because that one is very um, suicidal. So let's see how you can make it memorable and uncrackable. You see, we are, we are working on the hacker. How can you make it memorable and uncrackable? Okay, so I have this set of uh, letters. I want you to take time and uh, see how you can match them. I have E. T O uh, on the, the left side and on the right side, there are possible characters that you can match them with. Let's see, how can you match uh, E? Uh, which one is the nearest on the right side? Which one is the nearest to E? Let's see. All right, yeah, okay. I'm giving you time. I'm sure you guys are be able to match the, the characters on the right side and on the left side. All right, okay. Thank you, I can see you still, yeah, yeah, great. You guys are awesome. Yes, I'm waiting for you to give me, okay. Let's see what is there, okay. Congratulations, I know you have matched them like that. Like you can match E with three, T with plus, uh, O with a zero, the I with an exclamation mark, and so on and so forth. So let's move on and create our own password. Yeah, let's put the knowledge that we have into practice to create unbreakable, and hackable, and totally memorable password. I believe you have a pen and paper where you are, and uh, you have to listen to my instructions carefully. So we want to create memorable passwords that are unbreakable and hackable and totally memorable. So let's find uh, the instructions here. So how to create a password? Think of a fun phrase or an event that you can remember, okay? In our example, we have my little brother, Ethan, was born in December. Wow, so I believe you have thought of a, a phrase. It could be a children's book, and or where you went to high school or when your friend is going to graduate, uh, your favorite uh, film, you know, I believe you have thought of that. So write it down, mm -hmm, great. So uh, the second instruction is that you use the first letter from, uh, from some or all the words in your phrase. Use the first letter from some or all the words in your phrase. So like uh, the example that I gave you, my, I have used M, little, I've used L, brother, I've used B, Ethan, I've not uh, shortened that, so I've written Ethan in full, then was, I've used a double, uh, W, then B, uh, born, I've used B, in, I've used I, and December, I've used December in full. All right, I believe you're doing that on your side. Okay, so uh, the third instruction is change some letters into numbers and symbols. 
Okay, like in this instance, uh, we saw in the first activity that we had uh, covered uh, that you can actually use 3, 4, E. And you can see uh, Ethan there, okay, my little uh, brother Ethan, instead of uh, typing E, we have used number three, was born in December, okay. All right, B have uh, substituted it with uh, eight, then uh, E is there represented by three, like that, okay. And I is represented with an exclamation mark. So uh, try that, all right, let's see. Make some letters upper and some lower, okay. You can see my little brother Ethan, that is the same uh, place that we have been working on, but you can see now others are in uppercase and others are in lowercase. Can you now remember your password? This is awesome. Using a phrase that is memorable. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, do an activity together uh, to see what uh, um, maybe what we have learned uh, is a uh, thinking or uh, not. So let's go, you just type do or don't in the chat section. And remember, uh, we have our moderator sharing the, uh, the form where you are supposed to fill in to get your certificate and even give us feedback. So we're going to start with the first one. You type do or don't. Use a unique password for each of your important accounts. Is it a do or don't? Let's see. Okay, yes, I can see you guys typing there. Is it a do or don't? All right. Yes, I can see answers are streaming in. All right, yes, do, all right. Very good, okay. So let's go to the other one. Use personal information like name, address, a phone number when you make a password. What do you think? Is it a do or don't? Are you supposed to use your name, address, phone number? Let's see. Uh, okay, don't, all right. Hey, great, I can see you're getting it right, okay? Awesome. All right, let's uh, uh, do this other activity. Uh, use a password that's easy to guess like your nickname or your favorite baseball team? Is it a do or don't? What do you think? Mm -hmm. What you guys are supposed to have? Yeah, I can see the answer streaming in. It's a don't. Very good. Yeah, that is awesome. Use at least eight characters. Use at least eight characters in your password. What do you think? Is it a do or don't? Hey, very good. I can see a do somewhere. Good. Awesome. Yes, yes. Very good. So uh, let's see. Share your password with the people so you don't forget it. Share your password with people so you don't forget it. Let's see if it's a do or don't. Ah, okay, I can see answers streaming in. Awesome. Let's see. Wow. Yes, so that is what is expected. Don't share, don't share. Because we say when you share, your work is at risk. Uh -huh. Then uh, this one, uh, log out uh, of your accounts when, um, after you have finished on a public computer. Log out your computer account after you finished on a public computer. What do you think? Is it a do or don't? Let's see. All right. Okay. Yes, yes. Let's see. Wow. Awesome. Yes, don't. Okay. So let's see. Uh, uh, sorry. It should be a do. You should log out. You should log out uh, from all uh, the you know, log out all your accounts from a public computer. Then uh, 
a tick, remember my password when using a public computer. Is it a do or don't? When using a public computer, are you supposed to tick, remember my password? Let's see. Mm -hmm. I can see as answer streaming in. Awesome. Don't. Okay. Wow, congratulations. We are done with the second tenet and now you're being strong. And the hackers are people to forget at this point in time. Congratulations. Back to you, my co-presenter, uh, uh, Clarice, uh, to take us through the other tenet, the alert. Clarice, take it away. Yes. Thank you very much, Rosie. Uh, just as uh, we told you, we have to finish this guy. We have to do away with the oversharer. We have to do away with hacker. So here comes, uh, and we have already found the main means of doing them is we have to be strong by being secure. We have also to be smart by getting what we really want to share. Now, what we are going to deal with now is we have to be alert. And uh, what I mean by alert here is whereby we want now to deal with the third guy, the third bad guy. So the third bad guy is the fisher. So this is the guy we want to deal with. And we will find that at the end of the day, we will be smart people. What do I mean by fisher? Fisher are these people who lure you to just open a particular link. You just find there's a link on your, um, on your, on your screen or maybe on our WhatsApp group telling you that uh, just click on this particular link and you win one, uh, you win one million. I will tell you this, uh, there's nothing free in Kenya. So we really, really have to find how do we really identify the fisher? So what we have there, you can see on the picture uh, or what I'm presenting on my slide now, uh, it's just telling you, click here to win one million and see everybody who loves you. You see how the, the information is really luring. If you really imagine that with this particular, with the kind of economic situation that we are in, somebody's telling you to click and get one million automatically. If you don't really know how that these people are called Fisher, really want to get your personal information and do some harm to you, you will automatically click on those particular links. And we will all agree these links have always been our WhatsApp group on Facebook, whereby you are told Safaricom is offering, is there a particular thing, go to, go to a particular KFC, is offering free meals. Uh, those people, we really have to find today how we are going to deal with them. Yes, you can now see on that particular, those are some of the things that are fake. If you really check on that particular web address, web address is whereby some people call, when you find this, what we call web address, or uh, some people term it as the URL, the Uniform Resource Locator. You, you check on what we have on your screen, you'll find it's HTTP. Be very keen when you find HTTP minus the S. The S stands for security and legitimate. So if you really find such particular site, I'm not saying that all sites that misses that are, uh, are not good. If you really find such particular sites, uh, be very spectacle. Don't be very fast in uh, clicking on that particular link. So what you need to do is make sure there's that S and most of them in those particular parts of the S, you'll always find this a small padlock. Fake. So when we talk, is it really fake or is it really real, false or true? So these are some of the things that uh, with just a little information that I have given, we really want to check on how do we really know that this particular information I'm just about the genuine, I'm just about the link that I'm just about to open. Is it really fake or is it really true? So one thing is that uh, as the site includes in the data of a trustworthy site, like a badge. So those are some of the things that you'll always check on your URL. And if you find that it has that, that one, you are sure that particular site is OK. Secondly, but the URL matches the name. And 
uh, what is talking about or what you are looking for. You may find you are looking for a particular thing, but when you check on the name, these are two totally different things. So when you find that, don't really trust it, be very skeptical about it, and don't just click on those links like that. Does the offer seems to be too good to be true? Remember, we normally see when something is too good, think twice. And you just saw the one that I gave you as an example that just click here and get one million US dollar, not even just Kenyan shilling, but a US dollar, one million, and then you'll know people who love you. That is the, that is it too good to be true? That one particular, if you get such particular links, please don't click on them. Are there any pop-ups? What I mean by pop-ups, and uh, this one mostly when you open a new site, especially when you want information, pop-ups are those information that just come onto your screen. They come onto your screen and you really didn't subscribe for them. So are there many pop-ups on your screen? So those particular pop-ups, don't click on them. Most of the time, they tend not to be genuine. And here, does the URL start with HTTPS? I've told you about the S. And I've told you the S stands for the Genuity and Secure Sites. And just next to that S, you will always find a green padlock. That one tells you that that particular site that you really want to open is safe. Is the person or the site asking for you to reveal your private information? Or sometimes we normally say, does the site really ask for you to reveal some sensitive information? Please, please, and I'll always advise and urge you, please advise our youth. Anytime they really, the site is asking for their locations, what they are doing, and maybe their phone number, they should be very, very keen. And this one, we can now marry it with trending now about the girls. Seven girls from Comarock. I believe that is in the public domain. Everybody knows. So those are some of the things that we really should advise them, how to check on the sites that they are getting into. Because for them to be, be groomed online, they must have revealed their private information for the fishers to be able to trap them. Yes, so with that particular information that I've just given you, what to check if you are really dealing with uh, fake information or real information, just as you did some play on how to be strong. I also want us to really deal with some play here. Is it really fake or true? Uh, I want you to check on that particular email. And uh, you go to the chat section. Yeah, go to the chat section and uh, tell me if you see the subject is there, important membership information from that and then via and then the body. Is that really true or fake email? I really think uh, when we check on that, that one automatically becomes a true email because when you check on the domain here, it means that this particular company, yeah, there's a domain name here when you check is cinemas.com. So that one seems to be true. And then we have uh, some particular, I want you to check on uh, it uh, and check if uh, is it really real or fake on what you are seeing on your screen? Is it really real or fake? So uh, I just want you to check on the URL. Does it have a padlock? Does it have the URL is somewhere here? Yeah, you check. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry for that. You check on the URL, and when you see the URL here, where my insertion, let me use the highlighter. Where my highlighter is working, uh, I'm pointing on, you'll find there's that green padlock and there's S. So automatically that site becomes real. We have another one there, which is talking about congratulations, you have won an iPhone. Yes. If you find such particular, I want you to go to the chat section and uh, just be able to tell me if you find that particular information uh, is it really true or is, is it really fake so uh, i will think uh, uh, that information is not true 
why am I not seeing? Yeah, why am I not saying is true? So how can you just get uh, check on the font type first? The font type. Uh, see the congratulation, and when you check on the the body part of it, you find the fonts are very small in order so that you cannot reveal the information, so that you cannot know more the information about it. And then also that information is too good to be true to be able to just win an iPhone like that. We have another one there. I really want you to tell me if you think, hello, I have won a lottery. I want to share my good luck with you. I will give you that at first. Please send your bank details, full name, password, so I can give you money. Yeah, so yes, you can see the, the URL here is okay. You see the URL is okay. that padlock is that S. But what about the information? Is it really true? Is it, will you go for that? Uh, if you go for that, uh, as what I will advise you, you, you will not go for that. Why am I saying that is fake? Yes, somebody wants to share with you, but where is this, this person asking for the bank details and password more so? Remember when uh, my co-presenter was talking about password? Password is your secret. And that's why we normally say it's supposed to be difficult to guess, but easy to remember. Um, Mrs. Rosemary, maybe you can continue. I think um, Madam Clare is um, seen as um, fist. There, and uh, we'll go straight. I, I believe you have uh, uh, brought my screen. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we are, we are on uh, whether it's real or fake, and uh, we have this uh, scenario. Uh, hey, you seem like a fun person to hang out with. Let's have fun together. Uh, can you, you add me uh, to your friend list, uh, Remy? So is that uh, real or fake? What, what do you think? Yes, I I'm waiting for uh, your answers to stream in. Is it real or fake? Uh, that is uh, probably uh, fake. Why? Because there is no profile picture uh, requesting access to your personal information through uh, that is uh, through your account. You are not supposed to give that. Uh, then, uh, although it's not always easy to tell if someone is 100% real or fake, we advise um, that uh, probably you can ask if you're a student, you can ask an adult, or you can ask your parent, you can ask your teacher, you know. And if you're an adult, you can actually consult the, the people who are uh, tech savvy. So let's move on to the other scenario, uh, whether it's real or fake. Okay, you have that. And then uh, your Facebook account has uh, violated uh, policies uh, to avoid that link and uh, reconfirm it facebook security team is it uh, fake or real all right okay let's see uh -huh. Uh -huh. i can see answers uh, streaming in that is fake why 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 do you think it is fake businesses that hold very important information like facebook won't send you we won't send you a text message to warn you about a violation so that one is fake the link looks suspicious so great you are becoming an internet hero so let's move on to the uh, fourth tenet and that is uh, be kind okay uh, have you ever heard of a phrase that uh, talks about treat others the, the, the way you want to be treated 
even in the Bible, it's written, do unto others what you wish done unto you. Aha, uh -huh. this also applies online. You know, this is an environment. Online is just like this environment that we are dealing with. So uh, this means that you shouldn't post, comment, or forward something if you wouldn't want someone to do the same for you. Okay, so who are we dealing with? We are dealing with the troublemakers. Okay, the troublemakers, so uh, the possible dangers, they hurt your feeling. Actually, you feel so bad when someone posts, when someone comments badly about you. Unfortunately, there are troublemakers out there hurting feelings and being cruel to others online. And the worst thing about the troublemakers is that um, bad vibes can spread very fast. You can imagine if your picture with your big nose or your eyes or, or your dozing and stuff like that, and uh, you have a funny image and then someone posts it online, it goes viral, okay? So bad vibes can spread fast. So being cruel to others online, uh, he can turn them into troublemakers too. If you're cruel to others online, you can be a troublemaker. And that is why it is important to use our internet power to stop trouble making in its tracks. So how are we going to do that? So let's talk. All right. Uh, have you ever seen someone? Being like that? Yes. Clarice, thank you so much. Uh, we are moving on and uh, I'm doing the other tenet. That one of being kind, Karibu. So uh, have you ever seen someone being nasty online? I know you have ever seen someone being nasty online. Thank you so, so much, Rory. Uh, the best part, the best part, yeah, thank you, Karibu. Was, the best I, part of this. I just had some technical issues, but um, You're muted. Was it? So uh, the best part uh, uh, Okay, so the best part about uh, uh, kindness is that it makes it makes everyone feel good. And it even makes you feel good yourself. If you're kind to others, you also feel good. So let's move on and see um, ways to spread kindness online. So kindly go to the chat and tell us how would you be kind online? Because we, we have seen people posting bad things about others. So how can you be kind uh, to others? Uh, you have so many opportunities to respond to posts and comments. So um, why not be positive? So I challenge you to do something positive online each day. Leave an encouraging moment or send someone uh, a thank you text. These sorts of little acts of positivity will make uh, not only make you feel great, but will also inspire others to be kind online too. So let's see. What are you going to do? All right. Uh -huh. What can you do when uh, uh, someone found your friend's phone and sent a really mean message about uh, another student to a bunch of people on her solar team? Uh, this is uh, uh, an activity I want us to uh, do together. Uh, what can you do if someone found your friend's phone and sent a really mean message about another student to a bunch of people on her soccer team. Imagine that is somebody else's phone and somebody is using it to, uh, to send bad messages. What would you do? Mm -hmm. uh, great, I can see, I, I can see uh, you guys are doing something. Uh -huh. What can you do when someone is posting seriously mean comments about uh, one of your students in the class on your class blog. What do you think? Uh, any forum that you're on and if someone is posting seriously mean comments, what can you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh -huh. What can you do? Uh -huh. there, is, uh, there is an online game that a bunch of uh, your friends play a lot. This one time, 
one player starts saying really nasty stuff about one of your friends who is playing and uh, they just won't stop. What are you going to do? The bottom line is that you're supposed to be kind. Remember to be kind. Don't pass on gossip, okay? So how are you going to do that? You can help stop spread the harmful or untrue messages by not passing them uh, on to others. Block mean or inappropriate behavior. That is uh, also another thing that you can do. Then we have support others. How are you going to support others? You make an effort to provide support um, to those uh, being bullied, okay? You can be an upstander, okay? Uh -huh. Be an upstander and encourage others to speak up. When you see someone being mean to another person online, uh -huh, making them feel embarrassed or left out, making fun of them, disrespecting them, hurting their feelings, etc. You always have a choice. First, you can choose to be an upstander instead of a bystander by helping the target. Then take responsibility. And remember, it is up to all of us together um, as online community to keep the internet great. So be kind. Awesome, you're done with that tenet. So I'm going to invite my uh, co-presenter, Clarice, uh, to take us through the last tenet, be brave. Clarice, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Rosie. Uh, we have now done, we have seen how we can deal with these guys. And now let us find the last one, which will not even take five minutes. We really want to see on how to be brave. So this is what we... Yeah, we will be we'll talking about tell them to say something. We are encouraging them to talk out, to, to, to talk to us, to report or block any person who they find and also get proof. And lastly, they should have confidence. They should not be, they should not really be afraid. So let's talk about what I've just said. Let's talk about what I've just said. So um, maybe Madam Rosemary, you can continue. I think her screen has um, freezed again. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph. I'll take it up from there. Okay, we are talking. Okay, so uh, to finish up, we are going to test um, you on how much yeah, of a hero training uh, you have absorbed. Okay, heroes or what? Okay, let's see. Uh, what do you do, okay, when uh, you get a chat from someone with whom you're not, uh, you aren't familiar, and then that person is saying, I saw you in a math class. You are cute. Mm, that is so luring. Okay. What is your address? I, uh, I, can, uh, I, I can come over to hang out. What would you do? What do you think you should do? All right, uh -huh. yeah, that one. Uh, uh, okay, thank you so much. I can see you guys are, are, are um, typing in in the the chat what you do, you're going to do. Okay, another thing. What do you do um, 
if you accidentally download a virus on your computer, how can you respond? What do you think can actually uh, download an antivirus or uninstall it, okay? Then what do you do uh, if you see this message yeah, that says, everyone wear purple tomorrow, but don't tell Lethu. What would you do? Okay. I can see your answers are streaming in. Thank you so much. All right. We have been uh, given various tips. I'm sure you are applying them at this point in time. Uh, here is uh, the matter of being kind. Okay. Uh -huh. What do you do uh, if a student posts uh, a group photo in a public account and you hate the way you look in it? Would you report the photo or not? How can you respond? Using what we have learned, I'm sure you are going to. Uh, uh -huh, I can see uh, answers streaming in. Very good. What would you do if a student posts a, a, a group photo in a public account and you hate the way you look in it? Would you report that photo or not? Okay. How can you re how can you respond? Uh -huh, I can see your answers streaming in. Thank you so much. Ah, good. Be brave, you're done with that tenet. Mm -hmm. uh, how we are going to like uh, do a summary of how to be an uh, internet hero. The first one is you are supposed to be smart. Okay, you share with care. You are not here to, we are not here to tell you um, what you should or not do. Uh, but we do, we do want to give you suggestions uh, that you think before you share. Okay, you have seen how uh, information moves fast on the internet. So remember, when you're sharing, you share it with care. Be internet alert. Don't fall for uh, uh, fake. Don't fall for fake. So trust your guy. It sounds too good to be true. It is possible. Uh, it is uh, a fake one. So you be alert. Remember, Google and other reputable companies will never ask you for your password over an email. Know how to spot and uh, as, uh, the signs of a potential scam. Always check your, uh, your uh, with other people who are um, smart tech savvy. It could be your parent, it could be your teacher. Those are the trusted people that you can actually ask if you come across. Be strong and um, online. And you secure uh, your secrets. So we have learned how you can secure your, your information online and uh, given you the tips. And uh, while those uh, tips are, you use eight to uh, 12 characters, mix and lowercase mix numbers and symbols and choose unique yet memorable passwords for every site and don't share it with anyone okay so uh, be internet kind it's cool to be kind so make sure uh, whatever you're spreading online is you're spreading positivity and remember when you're in doubt um, talk it out you have to be brave okay so those are the things that we are talking about all right, so smart, alert, strong, kind, and be brave. So to learn more, we are going to share with you information where you can get uh, more uh, help even uh, here in Kenya. So kindly, uh, Marcela, you can share those links uh, so that we have the teachers, the parents who are here online and even the children who are with us uh, to visit those links, you can see we have ch uh, Childline Kenya. You can visit www.childlinekenya.co.ke or you can call the number there. So, ch uh, Children Kenya works in partnership with the government uh, to stop child abuse and provide safe environment for all the children. They offer and uh, not only nationwide helpline service dedicated uh, to children that runs for 24 hours toll free and is accessible by simply dialing 166. Then we also have the Google safety 
and that is their link. I'm kindly are going to ask again uh, Marcella to share the link. So kindly share the link so that uh, our participants are able to get. So you'll get heaps of articles there and advice uh, for how to be safe online, including practical uh, security advice, practical privacy tips and tips for sharing uh, responsibly. All right, then we also have the Child Online Protection Initiative by Communication Authority. There is their link. So this is an initiative that was launched uh, by Kenya government to raise awareness on issues such as in, inappropriate content, cyber crime, bullying, and fraud. Then we also have the, the Web Ranger, okay? Web Ranger is a digital literacy project designed to allow young people to gain critical skills and knowledge and around online safety. So I'm going to stop at that point, and I believe now your internet heroes, and uh, you're going to share the information with the others. Don't uh, uh, stop being kind. So I'm taking it over to uh, Marcella. I don't know if my co-presenter is back, but if she's not back, I take it back to Marcella, our moderator. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much, Madam Rosemary. Madam Clarice, do you have something? Okay, she seems to be offline. Again, I want to thank you all for taking your time. Yes, I'm back, Rosie. Yes. Thank you yes, so much, Clarice. Rosemary. I'm back. All right. Thank you so much, our presenters today, Madam Clarice and Madam Rosemary. That was a very educative presentation. And again, I want to take this chance to thank you, all of you, for taking time out of your schedules to attend this training. I think we've covered much and we've covered everything on the list. And please, before you leave, I would like you to fill back oh, the oh, certificate talk, 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 talk. To, to fill back the certificate form so you can get your certificate for free. And uh, the, also the feedback form, so you can be able to know your views, or rather, what are your what are your opinions about the training, how are they conducted, and such. So thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for following again. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, I'm going to